Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back today to talk about the two new units that are coming with the Galadrigalia, Gala, Gala uh, Agony and Vania, who is the first of our collab units. So I hope you like today's video. You can always, as always, leave your thoughts about the units. You can leave a like, uh, it helps the video, and it helps me, and you can also subscribe to me if you want some more video stuff. So, let's get into it. First things first, I did want to mention we are getting daily free summons, but... It's the the worst kind, where it's a single summon. <laughs> I would have preferred it if it wasn't that. I don't understand why they keep doing this one, because it's the it's the lesser one. I would I would prefer more. Now it, it is enough to basically get I think basically a free multi, but not on the banner that matters. At least it doesn't look like to me. So maybe enough to get your pity up slightly. I don't know. It's it's. I mean, for something free is better than nothing, but also, yeah, free singles. I mean, it's more, it's most useful here in the Galadrigalia, where either your the rates are much higher. So, all right, let's see. We got Vania, who is the newly added five adventure. Vania will also appear in the next summon showcase. All right, good to know. So that means she's gonna be. If you don't get, her, if you get Gala Reborn Agni uh, early, you might want to actually stop summoning. And wait for the Vania banner that will come literally next time. But I don't know if that means... Hmm. I don't know if that means that she's going to be featured on the next banner or she's just going to be in it. Huh. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. But it doesn't look like she's limited at all, which is good. So let's start with Vania. Fear not, Bloodkin. It is I, Vania. Crimson Order, shareable. Oh, let's read some of the lore. A vampire who, until recently, slumbered deep in the woods. She now travels the world to find a means of awakening her hibernating brethren. Her naivete is surpassed only by her Capricus ways. It's oh, it's actually kind of adorable sometimes. Crimson or Order, shareable five. Deals damage to the target and nearby enemies and restores the user's HP if the user has five blood packs. A more powerful version of this skill, called Bloody Absorption, will be used instead. In addition to this skill's base effects, Blood Absorption also dispels one enemy buff. Okay. Damage is 523 over three hits. 644 one hit. Recover potency 15. Skill energy required 3525. After skill change, damage is 550 over 3 hits. Damage is 1000 for 1 hit. Recover potency is 28. Skill energy required is 3525. Skill energy required shared skill. 12,690. And special effects dispel buff. Does that mean that only this specific version of the skill is what's going to end up being shareable? That's what it makes it seem to me. Okay, cool. Uh, Scarlet Gift grants the user a strength amp. This will increase the entire team's max HP. Wait, what? Increases the entire team's max HP. Okay, so it's a... No. Okay, it does both of those things. I'm, I don't know why I'm like, it's an HP amp? No, idiot. It's a strength amp. Why am I being so dumb? Uh, grants the user a strength amp. Increases the entire team's max HP. Uh, max HP. Wait, does that mean... That's just infinite? Am I... Am I crazy, or does that mean that you can just infinitely stack max HP? Right? Because it doesn't say, like, eh. Okay, cool. Co-op ability, skill damage 15%. Chain co-op ability, shadow HP 60% equals critical rate 8%. Vampiric potential 2. Using Crimson Order grants the user a blood pact. This effect can stack up to 5 times. If the user has 5 blood packs, the skill gauge for Scarlet Gift will gradually fill automatically. Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not affect this automatic increase. Blindness resistance 100%. HP 70% uh, equals skill haste 8%. Hmm. Okay. So yeah. It's always weird when they release shadow units. Because the last thing shadow actually needs is more units. Shadow is perfectly built fine. Uh, I will say... In a post nihility world, with Grace kind of being um, completely shut out of nihility because everything she does gets completely destroyed and washed, 
Um, and in some cases, I think Belina, who is the main dispeller for Shadow, playing her without Grace is maybe harder for a lot of people. So for maybe for some people, obviously Vania will not be your main source of... Actually, I don't know that. Let me wait and see how she is in action, because maybe for all I know, she's extremely good at what she does. Um, and I'm not 100% seeing it. She seems perfectly fine, but she seems like a unit that's going to be even better whenever Shadow gets their Nihility unit. For right now, it's very much a... This is solid. I don't see her breaking through to the current, like, Cayenne meta. Um, oh, you could probably use her perfectly fine in Cayenne, if I'm being honest. Um, it's not the hardest fight. <laughs> I mean, at least on Extreme. On the, other, on the other two forms, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, so yeah, nah we'll have to wait and see for Nihility to see how great she is. But obviously being, getting a Strength Amp means that, and she's the first of Shadow to do it, that kind of makes her good. Another Strength Amp user who gets it on skill 2 though, kind of annoyed with that. I don't know how you feel about this, tell me how you feel about it in the current landscape of the game. I don't think units with Strength Amp only, as their uh, main ability, will age at all. I think they'll age actually like by like in terms of the, the, uh, the overall rate of the game I think they're gonna age extremely poorly because right now their only their only use is giving strength amp but there's gonna come a point in the game where other units are gonna have a little bit more to what they do like for example Vania gives the max HP stuff that's something that uh, Miriam doesn't do I think she just gives a strength amp from what I can remember let me actually find it real quick one moment yeah, this is Miriam. Yeah, as you can see here, just a strength amp and nothing else. And obviously the SP costs 3,392 and this one costs significantly more. Um, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like in terms, I've, I don't know how they're going to plan forward strength amp and I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of worried that units like Miriam and eventually Vania just aren't going to be enough. They're going to get squeezed out of the very meta that they're kind of starting for. Um, they're starting up right now for Nihility, but you know, maybe that's a problem for a future Woki to worry about and talk about, but for now, let's move on to Reborn Agni. Here he is, here's my boy, Firehands Extreme, uh, Blazing Strike. This is Agni, he's Reborn, he looks new. Still no wings, I think. Blazing Strike deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts Scorched. Enemies in break state take reduced damage. If the user is targeting an enemy and it's not using a skill when they're... Okay, yeah, it's the same as the other. He'll use the skill again. He might have... He better do a buttload of damage. Damage 1,078. Damage... Wow, so damage 1,400. So that's... Mm, that's a lot of damage. Damage modifier 75% against enemies, minus 75% against enemies in break state. That is, mm, that is a lot of reduced damage. Okay, let's look at the rest real quick. Abilities, flame strength, 70%. Flame, fervor of the fire lord 2. If the user is attuned to flame, add 30% of the modifier applied to damage against wind attuned enemies and enemies with no uh, attunement? For 45 seconds every time the dragon gauge fills by 20%. This increase will not stack, and after activating this ability, will not active again for 5 seconds. Okay. Um, so let's talk about specifically the fact that he has to kind of go against Gallimars. Which Gallimars, for the exception of a couple units, is basically the go-to unit you use for fire. Uh, the reason is is because he's stupid broken, especially with Mim, who gets all her skills back after using it. Now, having said that, not every unit that you control needs to be using Mars, because some won't be able to take advantage of that ability of shapeshifting and getting all your skills back. And for them, someone like Gallup Reborn Agni might be better. Um, in terms of actually using him as the main dragon, as someone who uses basically just Mim, um... That ability of his skill kind of doesn't matter. What kind of matters is the rest of him. But in terms of if you're just using him with any, like um, the Prince, for example, uh, he is dealing a lot of damage. There's no denying 1,000 damage and then 1,470 damage is a lot of damage, and then he does it twice. Um, 
They were probably afraid of how quickly he would defeat the enemies if they did not put some kind of limit on him. So I still think he's going to be extremely good. I'm just kind of curious if it now means that you actually transform and use that skill before break state, deal a buttload of damage, and then kind of just un assault him on that. Like the, obviously the move is extremely good. It's I think it's kind of justifiable. 75% is a pretty big cut to damage. I'm not gonna lie. Every time I see the 75%, it really makes me go. Oof. Mm, that's that's uh, that's a heavy price. Heavy price. I think even if they had done it to 50%, it'd be a little bit better, because then it'd be, hmm, maybe, it, I guess they're still afraid of it just being a little bit too powerful. Even with that, all that um, put together with it. So I think he'll end up being perfectly solid. Uh, I think it's been fair to say that in the past, when it comes to other Reborn uh, units, I was extremely negative on them, and I did not see the worth in them, and I think it's very clear to me now that I was wrong in all those cases. Um, as someone missing a uh, reborn gene, I would very much like to have her so I can stop fucking using Thor. I was clearly wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see on him. I think he'll still do a lot of damage. The break stay is a boner killer for anyone who likes to see big, big boy damage, but I think he'll still deal big boy damage in break state, just not as much if he had been, obviously not as much if they had actually just broken the damage modifier. They had to do. They have to do something to set them apart from Mars, and the answer was big damage. So we'll see how his damage actually looks with everything uh, uh, after all the changes. I don't know why it's taking me so long to say we're, this is why I shouldn't record videos after work, but I don't have a choice. But that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Again, as always, you can leave a like, comment, tell me what you feel about these units, and you can subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. Until next time, everyone. You guys have a good night, good day, and I'll see you guys when the actual summon comes out. Peace out. Later. And until the next adventure. That's the last thing I was trying to remember to say.